diving into this. 201 in the morning, West Coast time. It's still the 3rd of February, 2024. We were John C. Roseman, California, two artists in recovery. Daryl, before you start talking about this crap over here and putting in your two cents worth, let me remind you, terms and conditions are going to be allowing to a point, you already know about that because you're dancing like crazy, but something like this, unless you have more information, that's all you have is supposition. You're going by what Dr. Drew has said at this point over here, but he doesn't know. Talks reports haven't come back yet. They're b barely getting their investigations going on. And it's going to take some time for them to get information out of this guy and also from his mother. They're going to be doing a complete background check on this one, dude. Now, I was trying to go through the press conference that they actually had, and you missed it completely. Some things like this, they don't go to the public. Other things to keep until they're ready to reveal it to the public. Uh, i got your picture over here. That's why I'm arguing with it right now. That's why I'm pointing over here. But also, yeah, I, I went through the TMZ article. I didn't go through the videos. Drew's guessing because he doesn't have all the information. He's an outsider. He's not part of the investigation. And if he wasn't part of the investigation, he wouldn't be revealing as much. That's how it is, and maybe if they're going to be yellow lighting you on this one, it's because you crossed into territories that are not ready for publication. I know it may be sounding interesting to you a few days ago, but you do realize that sometimes these things actually do bite people in the ass. That being said, me being the, the guy coming from areas being blacklisted one way or another for a short time and you both you know about it too because you've already been through it once before or twice okay that being said these stories are a bit weird and they do sleep they do sneak up into the corporate media if they're decided they're going to do this thing the right way and yes they didn't have a major public announcement on this damn thing. Otherwise, that would have been part of the the news cycle on this. And it's got me worried. It does. It has me worried about the damn crap. Now, I've heard about people doing some weird stuff back in the 60s and 70s. Growing up as a kid, you know, once in a while you read these things in the paper. When I think about hindsight the way it is. Didn't understand what the hell they were talking about. Hollywood made a thing about people being in drug use. And they tried to dance around it because they also had the quality checkers. A damn sensors? They had them on every, net, on every network. And if you happen to say or do something, they cut you off. The news had to be careful about what the hell they were telling the public about, and they still are these days. But they knew that the uh, fact checkers out there would be seeing whether or not it was actually appropriate for television or not to say about it. But something this particular gruesome, yeah, they weren't going to show it to anybody about it. It may have been one of a few times when they were showing things concerning about war that there also had to have been uh, censorship on that. You know, when he started doing the filming of uh, battle scenes of uh, World War One and also World War Two. You had to have government censors monitoring what these guys could write and not write about. And they'd get their pictures of gore, but not as much posted unless it was decades later when they, are, when they were released that we actually saw what war was all about. I think Vietnam was showing us showing us that a little bit more in detail on that. There were famous pictures out there that we get the interviews later on on how they're doing and surviving and struggling with it, including the uh, photographers, the photojournalists out there who had to make a, you know, they're making their bones out there and then they're discovering what the cost was. 
with the instant internet we've got right now, it takes it a while for the algorithms and the human monitoring to determine whether or not if something that gross was going to make it into the into the limelight. Said before, we deal, and I'm not going to just say that we deal with censorship and everything should be free. No, we do deal with limitations because at this point, it's what's considered right and wrong and what's moral and what's not. What's upsetting and what's, what's, who's got the stomach for something like this and who doesn't have the stomach for this? Do we want everybody else to have nightmares over this damn stuff? That's why when we've had classrooms of historians uh, and uh, professors and teachers trying to tell us about certain things that were very upsetting, that they're historical, but they were also needed to be seen. And so students were warned in their classrooms whether or not if they're going to be able to deal with this thing or not. And if the students are mature enough and they see this, yeah, they will react one way or another. Now, as for people actually under under the usage, it was not generally put into the public presses of seeing people freaking out left and right. It was just not done. It still isn't. We can see people running up and down the street left and right, screaming their heads off, or signs or something like that, or being chased by cops, that's one thing. But I notice, if I'm going to put this one into, into a perspective here, dude, when we get into uh, auto chases or vehicle chases, uh, the cops would get into with the, uh, with the potential suspects or persons of interest, And they happen to get into an accident. If it's gruesome enough, they're not going to show it. They'll pull away the camera. Say, for example, you got the uh, camera on the on this one driver, and he's shooting out of his car. And then you see the cops shooting back. The camera automatically, well, because of condition and by training, the photographer the photojournalist who's showing the people what's going on, they pull back to a wider shot because they don't want to see if there's going to be any kind of bloodshed or anything else to gross people out. If they happen to have the car stopped and they're having the shootout left and right, they'll show the pepper balls because lawn lethals don't show that much grotesque, even though it is violent in itself. But they won't show if there's going to be any bloodshed on this one. Unless, of course, there's going to be bloodshed one way or another. The cameraman has to keep that stuff out. There are certain terms and conditions that they even have to apply towards. And this is one of those things that we have to deal with. So naturally, yeah, you are hesitant because you know this was a bad topic to do this in the first place. I wouldn't even touch it. It's bad enough. One second. Sorry. Wrong pipe for the milk to get into. It may have been interesting for other people to read about it in the papers or even online. But there are certain things that I don't even touch unless I'm going to be putting it into a different context left and right. It's not like I'm going to be saying, Hey, look at this kind of topic. I thought this would be gro this groovy to, to watch. Even though this may be difficult for people to understand. But, you know, I think this is a good topic. No. Talking about... A uh, person doing another person harm. 
You're just being an ambulance chaser of sorts or you're being paparazzi. And sometimes I got to call it quits on it. Because sometimes, Daryl, I think you're not thinking enough. The LSD portion, you can try talking about your, your the drug abuse, I can understand. Maybe somebody else going through it as long as we know that the other person <coughs> was showing it and also proved. But while speculations, no, don't go there. Don't go there. It's a good way of losing video, uh, viewers on this one, pal. Including me.